Now, if you're interested, let me give you a brief introduction to the field of information science. Um, so, I actually do believe that you can learn about metadata without knowing much about the broader field of information science, but for many of you, this may be your first exposure to information science, so I just wanted to kind of give you that background. And here's the thing about information science is a lot of people have no idea what it is, right? If you say that you're studying, you know, law or medicine or computer science, most people will go, oh yeah, of course, right? People know what those things are, but information science, you say you're studying information science and a lot of people just kind of give you blank looks like, what is that? Right? So, I wanted to kind of spread the word a little bit to tell you about the, I think, and of course I'm biased, but tell you about the, I think, very interesting field of information science. You remember this term from the thesaurus of the American Society for Information Science and Technology, ACIST, right? This particular term information science, the ACEST thesaurus has provided you with a bunch of what are considered related fields and disciplines in one way or another, right? All of these fields and disciplines, right? Archival science, informatics, cognitive science, linguistics, etc., etc., right? And let's just ignore for the moment, the broader term, narrower term, related term relationships, and just say, ACIST says that these fields are related to information science, you know, somehow. And it's not hard to see how some of these fields are related. Computer science is fairly obvious. We've already talked about that some metadata is for human consumption, but some metadata is for computers and algorithms to work with, right? Archival science, we've already talked about some metadata being for preservation purposes. So of course the relationship there with archival work and preservation is fairly clear. Um, information retrieval, right? That seems like a fairly obvious thing that you might want to do with information objects. And this is the discipline that, you know, has contributed heavy, heavily, excuse me, to, you know, the development of search engines and the like. Linguistics, that's fairly obvious as well. We've been talking about vocabulary very extensively, right? But there are a bunch of other fields and disciplines that also are related to information science. And a few that I think are, are among the most obvious are things like cognitive psychology, right? What is information when it's in your head, right? What does it mean to be informed by something? What does it mean to have information in your possession, you know, cognitively? What is it that you know? What does it mean to know something, right? Industrial psychology. You read a lot these days about what are called learning organizations, but what does that really mean? How does an organization learn, right? How does information move through organizations? How does information get used in the context of an organization? That is to say, across individuals. Sociology is another good example. How does information flow through large groups on the scale of, you know, entire societies? Um, an example that I particularly like here is I have a colleague who studies social media and has done an awful lot of work uh, on the Arab Spring, right? Now, Twitter played a very large role in the events in Egypt. So how do you study how information was disseminated via Twitter during the events in Egypt in the Arab Spring, right? How do you talk about the flow of information through, you know, people who were at Tahrir Square and then people who were watching those events unfold at a distance, right? Anthropology. 
information science has learned an awful lot about how to study groups of users of information by looking to anthropology and their methods for studying groups. And, you know, these are only a few of the other fields that information science touches on, but I've tried to focus on the questions of information that come from those fields that information science is trying to address and sort of answer back to those fields. Information science is what is called an interdisciplinary field. Interdisciplinary. Interdisciplinary. Now, what that means is that it crosses disciplines, right? Information science tries to pull ideas and methods from other fields to inform how we study information and then contribute ideas and methods back to these other fields. It brings together you know, lots of different ideas and methods from lots of fields and we provide something of an intersection point. That said though, even though information science is interdisciplinary, it's still useful to focus just on the information piece. Right? Now, there are lots of questions that you could ask about information in any of those disciplines that I just talked about. Right? What is information? What are information objects? How is information created? How is it disseminated? Is information objective or subjective? Can information, you know, how can information objects be stored, organized, disseminated, right? What does it mean to be informed by information and information objects? I could go on and on. Now, part of the answer to any of those questions would have to involve people and technology, and often both. The subjective piece here is if information isn't informing someone, then is it really information? Is it something different like data, right? Is there a distinction to be made here between a book on the shelf that no one is looking at and a book that I am reading and learning from? Is it a different thing when it is informing me? Right? On the other hand, you can talk about information objects like books, which rely on some kind of a technology to exist. Right? If you're talking about digital objects, files on a computer or a network, the technology that those rely on is, of course, computing. If you're talking about books as information objects, then maybe you're talking about a more primitive set of technologies like paper making and printing. But technology is fundamental to the very existence of objects that we could call informative objects. So in this field, we tend to think of information science as having three parts, information, technology, and people. At the intersection of people and technology, we have what's called human-computer interaction, or in some fields, it's called computer-human interaction. And I think you can tell a lot about the particular worldview of a field by noticing whether it has the human first or the computer first. Um, but human-computer interaction is I think fairly obviously, how people interact with computing technology. What makes for a usable system, right? How do technologies get adopted and why or why not? At the intersection of information and people, you get human information interaction. Right? On the creation side, how does information get created? How do you encode information in symbol systems like language or metadata schemas? Right? On the consumption side, what does it mean to be informed 
by an information object. And then at the intersection of information and technology, we have information organization and information representation. Now, this is where metadata sits, right? How do you represent an organization scheme? <clears throat> Excuse me, right? A controlled vocabulary, a thesaurus, etc., is a way of organizing a large sort of universe of information. So how do you create a scheme that lets you take a complex information space and organize it into some sensible way? And then how do you represent that in writing or in code or whatnot? And then, of course, like I just said, metadata sits squarely in this quadrant of organization and representation of information. 